Let's start pricing uh, our first derivatives, first starting with the easiest ones to price, which are linear functions of the, of the underlying assets, forwards, futures and swaps. Yeah, we are going to see that we can price uh, those instruments, uh, no matter what our math mathematical model is for the underlying price, uh, we will only need to know the value of the underlying price and not the mathematical model for it, so that's why we call this model-independent pricing relations. Uh, okay, let's move to the next slide. And start with pricing forward contracts. Okay. So just to remind you what the forward contract is on an asset S, uh, at, uh, I'm going to call the initial time s lowercase t, small t for today, and the payoff is at capital T, the maturity. And the payoff uh, of, of a forward, if, if you're long a forward, you get your asset value at time capital T, uh, your Google stock or whatever, S&P 500 index, you pay for it the forward price. Okay? Uh, so the notation is F of small t, just to indicate that this forward price is known, it's decided at time small t. Although it's actually paid at capital T, it's already known as small t, so that's why I call it f of small t. And uh, I think I told you that the forward, forward contracts, when you enter them today at small t, uh, there is no exchange of money then. Uh, buyer and the seller don't exchange any, any uh, funds, any money uh, at initial time. They only exchange, uh, there is only payoff, positive or negative, uh, at capital T. So here is the question. Uh, what is the value for uh, f of t for the forward price that would make time t value, today's val time value when we enter the contract, make equal to zero? Okay? Make the, the value of the contract equal to zero when we enter it. Uh, we want that because we want in a forward contract uh, that there is no exchange, money, exchange of money today. Okay? So I will need only one assumption here, uh, and the assumption will be that there is a, a risk-free asset at which we can invest, uh, and uh, that risk-free asset, uh, to be general, I'm, gonna, I'm going to denote the, the, uh, the payoff at capital T of investing $1 in the risk-free asset uh, uh, at time small t, I'm going to de denote that by B of T capital T. So B for bank account or B for a bond, uh, either way it works. It's a, it's a risk-free asset which, which pays something at time capital T. So for example, we, we had examples of B of the, uh, T. If it's a continuously compounded rate, it would be E to the R uh, T minus T, capital T minus lowercase t. Uh, right? so, so that's one example, or it could be uh, 1 plus uh, r to the t, or if there is compounding, then you divide r, divide, uh, r by something, uh, by the number of compounding periods. So, you know, these are the examples. But that, that's what we had in mind. We have in mind by B of t capital T. All right, let's uh, move to the next slide. So that's the, the only assumption is we have something like that. We have a risk-free asset there. So here is our, our, our first result here. Uh, the, the, the claim is that if we, well, th there is another assumption. The other assumption is that there is no arbitrage in the market, okay? So if, if, we, if there is no arbitrage and we have a perfect market, uh, then the, the forward price has to be equal to the product B of T, T times S of T. Okay? What does this mean? This means that, for example, if it's, a, if it's a forward contract on a stock, it means this value is exactly the same if I sell the stock today, for which I will get S of small t, and I put it in the bank, I will have exactly this product at capital T. Yeah? So sell the stock today, you get S of t, put it in the bank, per each dollar you get B of t, t, so for S of t dollars I'm going to get this product. Okay? So the, the claim is, this is what the forward price has to be in order not to have arbitrage in the market. It has to be as if you sell that asset right now and put, it in, put the value in the bank, put the money in the bank. Okay. Uh, if, if there is no arbitrage, we claim this is the unique price 
the unique value for the forward contract so that the contract has time zero, uh, time uh, zero value equal to zero. All right, so we are going to have a, a lot of similar proofs now of, of these type of relationships, and they are going all to be they are all going to be based on the same idea, which is let's assume that something like this is not true, and then let's find arbitrage, and then therefore it has to be true. Okay? So by contradiction, if it's not true, there is arbitrage, therefore it has to be true. So that's how we are going to do it. In this case, we have equality, so I'm going, going to do it. I'm going to prove two things. I'm first going to prove that it cannot be strictly higher than this product. I will find arbitrage if it's strictly higher. And then later, I will find arbitrage if it's strictly lower. Okay, so in either case, I will find arbitrage. And I will conclude, well, it has to be equal. Otherwise, there is arbitrage. So the, 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 uh, the proof is, is in this case, uh, uh, quite short. Uh, suppose first that the, the forward price is strictly larger than this product. Okay? So we, we are always going to go with the logic by, uh, by cheap and sell expensive. So, so here, since this is larger than this, relatively speaking, it seems that uh, the forward co contract is uh, expensive and the stock is, is cheap. Okay. So, uh, so I'm going to buy the stock, I'm going to buy it cheap, uh, and I'm, gonna, I'm going to, to sell expensive, which means in this case I will go long in the forward contract. So let's do that. Uh, I'm going to buy one share. Uh, I'm assuming I'm starting with, let's say, zero money, so, so I have to borrow S of T to do that. I borrow S of T uh, today at small t, I buy one share, and I go short in the forward contract. You know, selling uh, the forward contract means go, going short in the forward contract. Uh, what does that mean for the future at capital T? Uh, well, if I'm short the forward contract, it means I have to deliver one share uh, of the underlying. But I have that share because I bought it initially. So I, I, have, I deliver that share. I receive f of t, which is this left-hand side. I receive f of t. I, I, uh, there, is, there is debt in the bank I have to cover because, because I borrowed s of t, so I, I owe something to the bank. How much do, do am I negative in the bank? How much do I owe? How much am I short in the bank? Uh, well, it's exactly the right-hand side. I borrowed initially s of t. That's going to increase to s of t times b of t t uh, when I pay interest to the bank. So this is the total amount. Uh, borrowed amount at time capital T. But because of this assumption, I receive from the forward contract more than what I need to pay to the bank, so I'm fine. Not only fine, I have extra positive uh, money after I cover the debt of this uh, equal to this product, so that's arbitrage. Yeah? It's I'm, I'm sure to make money uh, by, by this strategy, borrowing S of T to buy one share, uh, put that in, uh, borrow that from the bank, it's uh, going to increase to this much uh, borrowed money at capital T, but, but since I'm going to go short in the forward contract, I will receive this much in the from the forward contract uh, for my stock that I will deliver uh, at capital T, but that's higher than this product, so there you go, uh, we, we created arbitrage. Okay. All right, uh, similar logic. If the forward price is uh, less than this product, I'm just going to reverse all my positions. When I was buying, I would be selling. When I was selling, I would be buying. Uh, but the logic is the same. Um, buy cheap, now the forward contract is cheap, and sell, uh, sell expensive, now the stock is expensive. So let me sell short one share. Uh, and, uh, and let me... So when I, sell, when I sell short one share, I'm going to receive S of T, so I have to do something with it. Let's put it in the bank, and uh, let's go long in the forward contract. And that costs me nothing today. Uh, so, and I, so that's exactly the opposite, opposite positions than before. So at capital T, I just check that everything works and that I have extra money. So at capital T, uh, I, I am going to uh, have to pay F of T for for one share of the stock, okay. But this is this is the amount of money I have in the bank because I put S of T in the bank initially when I sold the stock, uh, and this is how much it's going to increase by the factor of B. 
So, so there you go. I have more in the bank than I have to pay for the forward in the forward contract for one share of the stock. A and so I, I, I do pay F of T. I get one share. What do I do with it? I close my short position. Right? I, I, I borrowed that share effectively by going short in, in that share. So I have to, I have to return that share uh, sometimes. So I return it now when I, when I, in the forward contract when I get that share by paying F of T, and I'm fine. I close my short position. Uh, I have more than enough money in the bank to, to pay the, the, the share in the forward contract, and there is extra money that is arbitrage, arbitrage profit. Right? So in both cases, strictly f of t is strictly larger than this product, or f of t is strictly lower than this product, I, I, I construct arbitrage. Uh, and uh, and uh, since we are assuming there is no arbitrage, if we assume there is no arbitrage, the price has to be like this. Yeah. Now, in, in reality, the price may not be exactly uh, following the formulas that we are going to see here, including this one. Uh, because there are there are some imperfections in the market, there are tax issues, uh, there are uh, transaction costs. Uh, selling short uh, is typically has some cost going with it. You have to have a margin account, so so selling short is not as easy as as, as going long uh, for for uh, assets uh, for stocks. Let's say uh, so. So there are these um, there are these imperfections, transaction costs when you trade. So there's, there are these imperfections that, that sometimes will make these formulas not quite be true in, in reality, but in this course we are, we are not taking those imperfections into account. We are assuming we have perfect markets. Okay. We can borrow and lend at the same rate, uh, there is zero transaction costs, there's no taxes, um, so selling short is, uh, is free, so all, all these kinds of things we are assuming here. Uh, basically, perfect. It's called perfect markets. <coughs> okay, so we know now know how to price a, a forward contract. Let's let's move next. The, well, thi this this was fine if uh, if nothing happens between today and capital T. Uh, but I if there are payments in between, we have to take those into account. Okay. So uh, actually, before, uh, uh, hopefully you didn't look too much, uh, too carefully at this slide. So here is a question for you. Suppose now you have a stock, uh, a forward contract on a stock uh, that pays dividends. Right? So intuitively, I is the forward contract, forward price going to be lower or higher? Is the forward contract be more expensive or less expensive in terms of its forward price? Uh, for the stock that pays dividends relative to a forward contract on an equivalent stock which doesn't pay dividends. Okay? So let's think about it. Uh, if, if the stock pays dividends, then if you're holding that stock, uh, it's not just uh, the profit uh, or loss that you will get by, by, uh, from uh, increase or, or decrease of that stock in the future, you are also getting the dividends in the meantime. Right? Now with the forward contract, you are only going to get that stock three months from now, let's say, uh, not, not today, which means if there are dividends between today and three months from now, it's not really like holding the stock. I, I, you are losing the opportunity to, you are losing those dividends. Uh, so forward contract is not as good as holding the stock. So we might guess here that what, that, uh, that the forward contract on a stock which pays dividends uh, the forward price is going to be lower than the forward price for an equivalent stock which doesn't pay dividends. Okay, so that's that's the next formula. Uh, there are two cases, maybe not completely real realistic either one of them, but th there are two easy cases. So uh, the first case, if I assume that S pays deterministic dividends, meaning I know sitting today at time small t, I know what the dividends will be. Then I claim that the formula uh, is like this. You, you, it's the same formula as before, except I, I subtract the present value of dividends from the, for the, from the current value of the stock. Uh, so d of t is the notation for the present value of the, of the dividends. Okay? So uh, 
so it's lower, okay, as we as we guessed, the forward price on a, on a stock which does pay dividends is lower. You just reduce the value of the stock by the present value of the dividends. Okay. There is another uh, elegant way of, of uh, modeling dividends. Uh, if S is, for example, an index like S and P 500, an index on uh, an average of many stocks, uh, then dividends are coming pretty frequently. And if you if you model those dividends as coming continuously at a continuous like at a continuously compounded rate called Q, uh, then the formula is actually like this. You don't subtract from S, you discount S by the rate of dividends. Okay? So here dividends are not deterministic because they're going to be proportional to how much uh, S of T is as, as it moves through time. Uh, uh, the, the payments are proportional. It's like Q S of T that you are getting each small time dt. Uh, uh, but so, so it's not subtracting something uh, b because we we don't know exactly the value of, of dividends. We just know it's at constant rate. Uh, instead of subtracting, you discount the stock by the by the rate of dividends. So I'm gonna I'm gonna show one of these next, uh, the first one, and then the second one. I'm going to do something similar for foreign currencies, uh, so, so I'm not going to show this one. Okay, so let's, uh, let's do that next.